chapter 19, page 130. Mishnah. Rabbi Eliezer Omer. Im lo hevi kli me'er Shabbat. If one did not bring in a vessel or an instrument, an instrument for circumcising on Shabbos Eve, mevi yo be Shabbat me'gule, he should bring it exposed on Shabbos. So he walks with it in his hand like this. He has it uncovered. Uncovered. Over mm-hmm. and during times of danger, he should cover it in the presence of witnesses. But Odama Rabbi Eliezer, Kortim etim lasot pechamin lasot barzel. We may fell trees to make charcoal in order to make an instrument of iron. That's curious. Is this to make the actual... Yes, yeah, to make the circumcision of the Klal Amar Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva gave us a general rule. Komala Chashe Shala Sota Me'er Shabbat. Any labor that can be form- performed on Shabbos Eve, Eina Dochei Ta Shabbat, does not push aside the Shabbos restrictions. She'i... Uh, Efshar la sotam er Shabbat, and a labor that cannot be performed on Shabbos Eve, such as Brit Milah, Docha et ha Shabbat. It does push aside Shabbos restrictions. Aha. That's very interesting. So, if it's specific for the day, you can't, and you can't do anything else about it. So, if you could have brought the knife before Shabbat, according to Akiva. Or if you, you could didn't, have made then you the, can't bring it on Shabbat. Or if you could have made them the iron. Yeah, for the left by extension. Uh-huh. That's very interesting. Gemara, Ibai Lehu, they inquired the sages, Tama de Rabbi Eliezer, is Rabbi Eliezer's reason, Mishum Chibuvei Mitzvah, because of... Uh, his love for the commandment of Brit Milah, or Dilma Mishum Chashada, or is it perhaps because of a need to avert suspicion? Uh, so this is the carrying of the knife. Mm. Lamai Nafkamina, what's the what practical difference does it make? La Atuya Mechuse al Piedim to include the option of covering it in the presence of witnesses. I Amart Amrat Mishum Chibuvei Mitzvah. If you say it's because of the love of the commandment of Milah, Megule Ein Mechuse Lo. Indeed, we should carry it exposed, but not covered. Ela i Amrat Mishum Chashada. However, if you say that we keep it exposed because of suspicion. It's well, even if it's covered with witnesses. May. What's the reason for this ruling? Itmar, it was stated. Amar Rabbi Levi, Lo Amara Rabbi Eliezer, Ela Lechibuve Mitzvah, Rabbi Eliezer stated this only for the purpose uh, for his love of the commandment of Milah. So it shouldn't be concealed, even with witnesses. Tanya nami hachi. It was also taught in a brayta. Mevio megule the ein mevio mechuse. He should bring the knife exposed, and he should not bring it covered. Divrei Rabbi Eliezer. Amar Ravashi. Matniti nami daika dekatane. Based on the Mishnah. It states, Uvisha'at hasakana machasehu al pi etim, and in times of danger you should cover it in the presence of witnesses. But sakana ain, so in danger, yes, you can cover it. Shelo basakana lo. When there's no danger, you know you don't cover it. Shmamina mishum kibuve mitzvah. Derived from this, the specific mention of danger, uh, what? Now he says, conclude from this that the scalpel is uncovered due to affection for the mitzvah. The Gemara states, indeed, conclude from this. Shmami na. Yeah. 
But it's not a time of danger. The only reason for covering the life is that you're afraid that someone will see you carrying this thing on Shabbat and come to some sort of wrong conclusion about you. But he's saying that you don't cover it. No. And the reason you don't cover it is that it's something that you should show your love for when you do the mitzvah of Brit Miller. I'm proud to be yeah. carrying this knife from you. Ah, brilliant. Tanya Idach, it was taught in another Baraita. Mevio Megula, the Ain Mevio Mechuse, should bring the knife exposed and should not bring it covered. Divri Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yudua Mer, Mishum Rabbi Eliezer. So Rabbi Yudua said in the name of Rabbi Eliezer, No, again, Hayub Ishat Hasakana, in times of danger, they would follow the practice. Shayum Mevi Mechuse al Piedim, of bringing it concealed with the knowledge of witnesses. witnesses. Ibai Lehu, and the sages inquired, Aidim de Kama Ihu Vachad. The witnesses which Rabbi spoke, he uh, is himself and one other person, or Dilma Hu Utre, or perhaps he and two others. Tashma, come and hear the proof. Uva Sakana Machaseo al Pi Edim. So in terms of you should cover it in the presence of witnesses. I am Rat Bishlama Hu Utre Shapir. It's well if you say he and two others. Because it says a dim witnesses, uh, plural. Ella i amrat hu vachad. But if you say he and only one other, my a dim. What do you mean when you say witnesses? She reuim lehaid b'makom acher, because they are qualified to testify in another case. And by they it means him and the sole other witness. In a completely different case? Yeah, in, uh, they can go and testify in any court. Mm. I think that's what that means. You know, not just this one, you know, whatever's happening there, but they can, no. these, two are va- these two people, the knife carrier and the other one, are both valid witnesses in any court case. So there should be sufficient number of witnesses for carrying the knife. Great. The other my Rabbi Eliezer, this is about falling the trees to make charcoal. Tan Rabbanan, bim kamosha Rabbi Eliezer, in Rabbi Eliezer's place of residence, hayu kortin etzim la'asot pechamin la'asot barzel. They would fall trees to make charcoal in order to make the iron for the knife. The Shabbat, on Shabbat, oh, as per the lenient ruling, Bim Kamosha Rabbi Yossi Aglili, in Rabbi Yossi Aglili's place, Hayu Achlin Besar Of Bechalav, they would eat fowl meat with milk, so they would eat chicken and milk yeah. together. And it was a perfectly valid thing to do. Mm. It's only, um, it, it's uh, a rabbinic. Decree that prevents you from doing it. Now, there's a footnote here, meat and milk. Yeah, go ahead. The basic details of this halacha appear in Tractate Hulin, where a variety of derivations are cited in order to establish the parameters of this prohibition, which includes cooking meat and milk together, as well as eating and benefiting from that combination. The halachic conclusion is that the Torah does not prohibit cooking poultry and milk. Nevertheless, the sages issued a decree prohibiting it, lest one come to confuse poultry meat with meat of an animal. Right. Levi Ikla, Levi Yosef, Rishba. Levi uh, visited the house of Yosef, the trapper of fowl. Uh, Levi Ikla, Levi. Yosef Rishba. So he was a chicken catcher. Uh, here he just describes him as uh, the hunter. The hunter. Yosef, Joseph the hunter. Karivu le reisha de tavta bechalva. They served Levi a peacock's head in milk. Yum, yum. Lo achal. He didn't eat it. 
Ki ata lakame de Rabbi Amale when Levi came before Rebbe. Rebbe said to him, Amailo tisham tinhu. Why did you not excommunicate the member of, members of Yosef's household for that violation? Amale, Levi said to Rebbe, Atre de Rabbi Yehuda ben Betera Haba. That was Rabbi Yehuda ben Betera's town. Vamina Dilma de Rash. And I thought perhaps Rabbi Yehuda expounds as Rabbi Yosiak Lili. Did not because we learned in the Mishnah, Rabbi Yosiak Lili Omer, Neymar Lot Hochlu Kol Nevela. You shall not eat any carcass, and Neymar Lot Hevashel Gedi Bechalev Imo. And also it says, You shall not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Et She Asur Mishum Nevela, that which is prohibited under the category of Nevela, carcass. Uh, or that would novella is something that hasn't been checked um, mm. according to Kashrut. Asur levashel bechalav. It's forbidden to be cooked with milk. Of she asur mishum novella, which is prohibited under the category of novella. That's curious. Yachol yehe asur levashel bechalav. You might think it's forbidden to be cooked with milk. Talmud Lomar, scripture comes to say, Bechalev Imo, in its mother's milk. Perfectly ah. logical. This excludes poetry. Yatsa of She'en Lo Chalev, Chalev M. Thereby, fowl is excluded from the prohibition because it has no mother's milk. Perfectly logical. <laughs> Are you serving that at your Indian dinner tonight? No. no. <laughs> I'm a Rabbi Yitzchak. But I, 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 I must <laughs> say I would not be, uh, I would not be against. Not frown upon. A rabbinic reinterpretation saying that in this age we've come together and we have decided that we will not go beyond what the Torah demands and we are going to revoke the decision of the sages, and if they did that, I would start cooking chicken and milk, no problem at all. Yeah. Because it's not again. Chicken parmesan? <laughs> Actually, chicken in a sour white cream sauce would be very nice. Probably. Probably. Having eaten that sort of stuff um, in my youth. You know that... Sorry to interrupt. Mm. I see what they're saying that there's certainly an issue of maratain. People see mm. you eating meat, looks like meat, but you know what? Chicken is white and meat is red. There's a massive difference. Unless you're having veal. Well, what colour is veal? Real veal, which I don't think we have in the Jewish community, but real veal is a very white meat. Really? Mm. Um, you, I can remember my mother cooking it, and it was a very white meat. It uh, used to be, well, probably still is if you're spending money, um, it would be milk-fed. It wouldn't have been weaned before being killed. Mm. And consequently, it had a very pale meat. I mean, it may not have been as white as chicken, but it was a very, very pale pink, and when you cooked it, you know, and if you did it in a white sauce, it was as white as the sauce that it was in. Interesting. Okay. Rabbi Yitzchak. That's, that's a fascinating discussion. Truly. And I tell you what, there is no notes on it here. Which I must say is extremely telling. Mm. And he's only got this one short note, but which sets it out there. Quickly yeah. and concisely. Yeah, I never thought about it. In its mother's milk. That's a fascinating thought. Ami Rabbi, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Irachatayta be Eretz Israel shayu asim karabi Eliezer. There was a city in the land of Israel uh, where people acted in accordance with Rabbi Eliezer's rulings, Vahimetim Bismanan, they would die in their proper time. The law of Ela Shapamachad, not only that, <coughs> but one, Gazara Agazra Machut 
Harsha'ag Zera Al Yisrael Al Hamila, the evil regime of the Romans, this is a decree on Israel against circumcision. But Al Osa Ha'ir Lo Gazra, and on that city they did not make the decree. Now, what are they saying? These are well respected. That they made, they <coughs> made the circumcision knife with charcoal that they made on Shabbat, or that they made the knife and sharpened it and so on on Shabbat. Carried it openly. And carried it openly, and consequently all these expressions of open love for the mitzvah protected them. Ah. I think that's what this is. Yes, I see. Very good. Tanya, Tottenham Bray, so Ravan Shimon ben Gamil Omer. Kol mitzvah shiki bloa lehem besimcha, any commandment that the Jewish people accept upon themselves with simcha, with joy, kagom mila dichtiv, such a circumcision, it's written, saf anochi al imratecha kemotse shalal rav. I rejoice over your, rejoice over your word, like one who finds abundant spoils. What translation do you have? Who finds great spoil. Uh, it's written, I rejoice at your word, as one who finds great spoil. In other words, someone who finds a treasure. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Adai no sinot they still perform with joy. The chomit hashi kiblo alehem big tata, and any commandment that the Jewish people accepted upon themselves contentiously, kegon arayot dichtiv, such as ancestral relations, as it's written, the Yishma Moshe Ta'am Boche Lemish Bechotav, and Moses had people weeping by their families, al iske mishbechotav meaning they wept over their family affairs, legitimate marital relations, unions, Adain osinata biktata, they still observe contentiously, the lake ketuba, the loramuba tigra. There is no marriage contract concerning where the parties which do not quarrel, which the parties do not quarrel. Uh, oh, fire. Fi- Yes, they please. wept over matters pertaining to their families, as they were prohibited at that time from marrying family members. Mm-hmm. They still perform with contentiousness. The fact is that there is no marriage contract and wedding in which contentiousness does not arise, as there <laughs> is inevitably some conflict between the parties. The writer asserts that this is because initially the Jews did not accept the laws governing marriage and family relationships willingly. Mm-hmm. But then if we go, what should we say, if we look at uh, Jewish marriage before the giving of the Torah of Sinai in the families of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, there was plenty of contentiousness then. So you see the contentiousness in, in, in today's terms is over financial matters or with a dowry or whatever. Any, anything, there's always, always contention involved in marriage. Uh, married off at the age of 12. And this woman spoke good English and uh, had her first child mm. before her 13th birthday. And she turned round to her own mother, gave her the baby after it, and said, you, you wanted me to get married, you look after the baby. And walked out of the house and went back to playing with her girlfriend, skipping and whatever else. Mm. Tanya, who's talking about Baraisa, Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar on there, Komit Fashim Masri Israel Atman Alehem Mita, any commandment for which the Jewish people gave themselves over to death, Bishat Gezerat Machut, at a time of government edict, Kigon Avodat Kochabimumila, such as idolatry or circumcision, Adain Hi Mochezeket. Muchzeket Beyadam is still held firmly in their hands. Vechol mitzvah shalom masro Yisrael atman alei halimitzah 
any commandment of which the Jewish people did not give themselves over to, over to death, Bishat Gezer at Hamachot, at the time of the government edict, Kagon Tefillin, such as Tefillin, Adain Hi Merupa Biadam. Which is an interesting uh, observation. I mean, we're looking at the height of um, yeah, the Talmudic period, when all this is going on, and Tefillin was still a difficulty to, to in practice. Yeah. And I think you so things haven't changed in 2000 years. No. And you've got you've got even later things. That, that for instance, uh, the tefillin is set out according to Rashi, the ones that most of us wear. Or Rabbeinu Tam, <coughs> yeah. And then you have Rabbeinu Tam, yeah, who is the grandson of Rashi, right? Who suggests a different form, right? What does that suggest? that there was no final design of the tefillin at Rashi's time, that there were several possibilities in existence, and it was possible for the grandson to contradict his grandfather. We could afford to be accepted. Yeah, with, whereas with Miller, we knew exactly no, what to exactly, do. Exactly, there's no question. Tamar Rabi Yanai. Filin Trichin Guf Naki Ke Elisha Baal Knafaim. Filin require a clean body, as Elisha, the winged one, said. Mayhi, what is it that is a clean body? Amar Abay, Shelo Yafiach Bahem, that one should not pass wind with them on. Rava Amar Shelo Yisham Bahem, that one should not sleep in them. Vamai Karule Elisha Baal Knafaim, why do they call him Elisha the winged one? Shepamachat Gazra Malchut HaRasha Gezera Al Israel because once the Roman government, evil Roman government, issued its decree against Israel, Shekola Meniach Tefillin Al Rosho, that in anyone who puts Tefillin on their head, yeah, I think so too. Yikru Et Mocho, they would gouge out his brain beneath the head Tefillin, Vahaya Elisha Meniach Tefillin Vyatel Ashuk, Elisha would put Tefillin on and go out into the marketplace in defiance. The Ra'ahu Kastor Echad, a certain official spied him. Spied him. Rat Milfanav the Rat Achrav, Elisha ran from the official and the official ran after him. Kevan Shigia Etlo, as the official caught out to him, Natala Mereshova Chazan Beado, he took the feeling off his head and grasped him inside his hand. Amale Ma Beadecha, what's in your hand? The official said to him, Amalo Kanfeyona, does win. Pashat et yado v'nim tse'u ba kanfeyona. He opened his hand and in it were dove swings. Lefiecha hayu kori no toba al knafayim, therefore they will call him the wind one. Maishna kanfeyona dama le, what's unique about dove swings that Elisha answered this? Velo ama le sha'ar ofot and did not and not answer with about other birds. Mishum to Damya Knesset Yisrael Yona, because the congregation, congregation of Israel resembles the dove. Shnema. Kan fe Yona nech pa bekesef ve evroteha birak rak chalutz. As it says, you'll be like the wings of a dove covered with silver and her pinions with brilliant gold. Ma Yona zo knafeha meginot aleha, just as this dove its wings protected, af Israel mitzvot meginot alehem. So with Israel, the commandments protect them. Amar Rabbi Ababar Rav Ada Amar Rabbi Yitzchak. Pamachat shachachu velo heviu yizmel me'er Shabbat. Once they forgot and did not bring a knife on Shabbos Eve, the Brit Miller, the Hidio, the Hidio, who the Shabbat, Derek Gagot, the Derek Hatzerot, they brought it on the Shabbos by way of joining roofs and courtyards so they wouldn't walk through the open space, open Rishut Rabbi Maishim. Yep. Shalom, dear son Rabbi Eliezer. And this was not with the approval of Rabbi Eliezer. Mat Kifla Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef rejects to this. Shalom, your son, Rabbi Eliezer. Ad Rabbi Rabbi Eliezer, who to On the contrary, it's Rabbi Eliezer who permits the carrying. 
Bechitema, if you'll say, Shalom Bechitema, Rabbi Eliezer, Zashari, Afilu Bechitema, Rabbi, not with the approval of Rabbi Eliezer, who permits, even in the public domain, Ela Bechitema, Rabbi Ananta, Aswa, Zerach, Rishitema, Rabbi, but with the approval of the rabbis, who prohibited through the public domain. Bechitema, Zerach, Gagot, Zerach, 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 Pifot, but permitted by way of roofs, courtyards, and carpifiot. What's it's got the enclosures. Yeah. What's the word that we know that isn't there a word? Um, mm-hmm. What's the? Ka- are you thinking of carmelites? Carmelite. It sounds a bit like mm. carmelite. Okay. Uma omishare for uh, would the rabbis permit? Carrying the knife this way, but Tanya was turned a bracer. Keshem she'en mevi yinot so the referee should have been just as we may not bring us a knife through the public domain. Kach e mevi yin oto lo derech kagot so we may not bring it by way of the roofs. Velo derech karpifiot karpifot. Velo derech chaterot not by the karpas not by the way of the courtyards. By the way, what was the karpas? An enclosed area not for residential purposes. Maybe it means... It's a vacant lot. Ah. Could be. Yeah. Uh, so, according to that price, the rabbis would not have approved. Ela ma ravashi shelobirton rabbi Eliezer umacha luktu lukto um Transporting this way is not with the approval of Rebbe Lezer and his opposition. Ela Birton Rabbi Shimon, but with the approval of Rebbe Shimon. A famous. Famous Rebbe Shimon. Lenient Rebbe Shimon. Ditsam, because we learned in the Mishnah. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Echad Kagot Ve'echad Kapifot Ve'echad Katsairot, Kulan Reshut Echad Hain. They're all one domain. La Kelin Shishav tu betochan, because utensils that were resting in them at the beginning of Shabbos, velo lechelim shishav tu betochabai, but not for utensils that were resting inside the, inside the house at that time. Now, there's the halacha mm-hmm. carrying a circumcision scalpel on Shabbos from one domain to another. Yeah. If the circumcision scalpel were not brought to the place where the circumcision was to be performed on Shabbat, it is prohibited to carry it from one domain to another, including from a public domain or a Carmelite into a private domain, and from one courtyard to another, or to an alleyway. If uh, they were not joined together through an Erev, in accordance with the opinion of the rabbis. Uh-huh. Now, roofs, enclosures, and courtyards. Uh-huh. Roofs, enclosures, and courtyards are considered a single domain with regard to the vessels found there at the beginning of Shabbat. Consequently, it is permitted to carry from one to another, even if the individual areas belong to different owners, and they were not joined by an Erev. However, if the vessels were in the house at the beginning of Shabbat, mm-hmm. it is prohibited to carry them out of the courtyard area of that house mm-hmm. in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. Mm-hmm. So, but if they were on the roof, would so that be okay? Or if it was in the courtyard outside the front door? Or maybe you could carry them along the roofs as opposed to along the rest of the time. Yeah, that's possible. It's certainly a new mm. area that we haven't discussed yet. Well, that'll probably be clarified when we do yeah, everything. Mm. Looking forward to that. But I mean, I can throw things to my neighbour on the other room. But I mean, Rabbi Zera and Rabbi Yassi. Mavoi shelo nishtatfu bo, an alley in which the courtyards were not merged. Okay. Mahu letaltel bechulo. What is the law about carrying in its entirety? Do we say an alley is like a courtyard? I've got to be honest. The alley 
I think, where the courtyards are not joined. This, to me, speaks just like what we have here, just in our streets around here. I, I would call... I, I'm, I think... I don't see how you can call our streets Rishud Harabim, according to the... No, but well, you can't. You can't. There is, I, I would say, the only possible Rishud Harabim in this area. And there, again, it's uh, only a possibility, mm. is... Uh, long road. Down a long road. Because, I mean, what do you need? 600,000 people travelling on it in one day. And Jews, probably. Yeah, I mean, this to me sounds like our kind of case. Maybe I mean, I'm sure the rabbis wouldn't wouldn't agree with the Yeah, because anyway. they're afraid of things loosening up too much. Probably. I would say, but uh, I think you're right. Should we keep reading? Yeah, go on. Mi amrinam kachaset ame. Do we say in alleys like a courtyard, machater afal gav deloa ervu, just as a courtyard, even though its residents did not merge before Shabbos, mutar letalta bechula, you're permitted to carry in its entirety. Hai nami, uh, this is for a mavoy as well. Afal gav delo nishtatfu bo, even though its courtyards were not merged in it, mutar letalta bechula, we are permitted to carry in its entirety. Or, diuma lo dame lechatzer, perhaps an Eli is not like a courtyard, Dechatzer itle arve mechitzot for koyad has four petitions. Hai late le arba mechitzot, and this mavoi does not have four petitions. Ina mechatzer itle the diurin. Alternatively, a koyad has residence. Hai late be diurin, and a mavoi does not have residence. Good questions. Shatik velo amar le velo midi. Rabasi, Rabasi was silent and said nothing to Rabbi Zera. Zimnim ashkecheti yativ vekamar. But on another occasion, Rabbi Zera found Rabbi sitting and Rabbi said, Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish mishum Rabbi Yehuda anasi. Pamachat shachachu velo heviu Ismail. Me'erev Shabbat. Once I forgot and did not bring a knife on Shabbos Eve for a Brit Milah. Ve'heviuhu be'Shabbat. And they brought on Shabbos. Va'yad hadava kashe l'chachmim. The matter was a uh, kashe, a difficulty for the sages. Hey, ach manichin divrei chachmim ve'osin karabi Eliezer. How these people could disregard the opinion of the sages and act in accordance with Rabbi Eliezer. Two reasons why. Chada de Rabbi Eliezer Shamuti, who, one because Rabbi Eliezer was excommunicated. He was the one that was excommunicated. Uh, what's the other reason? Ve'oz, yachid ve'rabim halacha karabim, and moreover, an individual and a majority, the halacha calls with the majority. This is a big issue. We can't break this one. Go ahead. One reason was that Rabbi Eliezer was a Shamuti, that is, the follower of the views of Beit Shammai. And the halacha is generally in accordance with the opinion of Beit Hillel in their disputes with Beit Shammai. Oh, really? And furthermore... That's certainly a different take on it. There is a general rule that in a dispute between an individual and the many, the halacha is in accordance with the opinion of the many. Here, too, the halacha should certainly be in accordance with the opinion of the rabbis who disagree with Rabbi and the age. Okay. The Amar Rabbi Yoshaya, and Rabbi Yoshaya said... Elite et Rabbi Yehuda Gozev Amali. I asked Rabbi Yehuda the circumciser, and he told me, "My voice shall only start for Bo Hava." It was an alley in which the courtyards were not merged. Vayshituf. The ayetuhu mehay reisha lehay reisha, and they brought the knife from this end of the alley to the other end. Amale, Rabbi Zera said to Rabbi Yehuda, "Sfirale lamar, master holds." Mavoy shalom nishtat for an alley in which the koyads are not merged. Vayshituf. Mutar letalta bechulu bechulo. They're permitted to carry in its entirety. Vamar leyin and Rabbi Yossi says Rabbi Zera indeed. Amar le Rabbi Zera says Rabbi Yossi have a hazim in the ayi minach. 
but an occasion on the occasion where I inquired of you about this, Velo Amartli Hachin you didn't answer me. Dilma Agav Shitfach Rehitlach Gmarach. Perhaps through the flow of your learning, uh, your tradition came running back to you. That's a nice way of being diplomatic. Amale A Rabbi Asi says Rabbi Zera indeed. Agav Shitfa Rehita Li Gmari. Through the flow of my learning, my tradition came running back to me. Very nice. Itmar, that's actually quite that's quite logical to assume. Yeah. Itmar was stated, Ama Rabbi Zer Amar Rav. Mavoy Shalonishtas Fubo. An alley in which the courtyards were not merged. Via <coughs> Shitu. We may carry in it only within Faramot. In it. With own, only within a distance. What? So the most you can carry is Faramot in a Mavoy here? Is that what they're saying? Or beyond the Mavoy? Okay. Um, uh, the same it place? seems to say yeah. that you can only carry it within four cubits, so you can't carry it more than okay. um, a couple of meters. Which is just like a rishur up here. Amar Abaye, Ha Milta Amra, Rabbi Zerah Velo Perisha. Rabbi Zerah stated this opinion, but he didn't explain it well. <laughs> Hence you and I sitting here with our hands open. Ad Ata Rabbi Bar Avuha U Perisha, until Rabbi Bar Avuha came and explained it, to Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav, Bar Avuha, Amar Rav, Mavoy Shalon Nishtasubo, an alley in which the courtyards were not merged, by the Shituf, Eir Vul Chatseros Im Batim, the courtyards, um, the, where the courtyards were merged with uh, the houses of other courtyards, I think it means. Ein Metalfin Bo Ela Ba'arba Amot, we may carry in the alley only within four Amot. Lo ervo chatseros in batim, with courtyards where they did not merge uh, the houses with the ervo chatseros. Mutar le teltel bekulo. I'll permit to carry. Yeah, please. This translation because there's lots of expansion. Go ahead. Amar Abaya. Abaya said, this halachic matter was stated by Rabbi Zayra and he did not explain it. It remained enigmatic until Rabbi Bar Ahu came and explained it. As Rav Nachman said, that Rav Rabbi Bar Avu said, that Rav said, with regard to an alleyway that was not merged by the residents of the courtyards that opened into it, if they joined the courtyards with the houses, that is, the home owners within each courtyard joined together, and are therefore permitted to carry within the courtyards themselves, mm-hmm. it is only permitted to carry in it within four cubits, as in an intermediary domain, a Carmelit. However, if they did not join the courtyards with the houses, and it is prohibited to carry within the courtyards, it is permitted to carry in the entire alleyway. I don't see the logic of that at all. No, do I? Uh, here, there's Halakha here on the hey, only way that was not... It also there. goes on, by the way. Just, yeah, so, just so, so you know it goes yeah. on. Do you, want to, do you want to read that, anyway? Okay. I just wanted to let you know it goes on. It continues the discussion. Vessels that were located <coughs> in a closed alleyway from the beginning of Shabbat may be moved anywhere within that alleyway, whether or not the courtyards were merged together or the houses within the courtyards were joined together. That makes sense. The halakha in this matter is not in accordance <coughs> with the opinion of Rav, but in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan, right. cited in Eruvin. As Rabbi Shimon's ruling with regard to the halachot of roofs and courtyards is accepted, as is accepted, sorry, now, according to the Rambam, if the houses in the courtyards were joined together, but the various courtyards in the alleyway did not merge, it is permitted to carry only four cubits in the alleyway. 
Okay. I think it would be nice to have someone who explains the exact reasons behind that. Let's keep going. Amar le Rav Hanina Chazal Rava. Meishna ki ervu chaseradim batim. Why is it different when the courtyards emerge with the houses? Dinitku chaseravanasu batim. It's because, due to the Eruv, the courtyards have been removed from their normal status and transformed into houses. Ah, that's interesting. Which, of course, then means that you can't take it outside because they all the courtyards and everything has become private domain. The Rav, the Tame Dama Rav, and Rav, who said that you can't carry an Amavoy, follows his own reasoning. For Rav said, Ein Amavoy Nitar Belechi Vekora, and Ali is not rendered permissible by virtue of a side post or a crossbeam, a Lechi or a Kora. Ad Sheyehu. Unless there are batin v'chatserot p'tuchin l'tocho. Unless there are houses and courtyards opening into the alleyway. V'hacha batin ika chatserot leka. And here, where the courtyards were nullified, there are houses opening into the alley but there are no courtyards. Mm. Hence, a mere side post or crossbeam placed at the Mavoy's open end does not constitute a proper petition, and so it is prohibited to carry more than four amot in the Mavoy. The matter does continue. read the next paragraph? Should I should I keep going on the next paragraph? It's it's brought out it'll be another two or three minutes. You are you alright to I'm okay for another two or three minutes. I'm just looking at it it goes on for a bit for quite a bit. No 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 it's only I'll I'll continue are you alright to continue yeah, just yeah. a little Kilo Air for Nami where the courtyards did not merge with the houses as well. Let us receive these houses if they were sealed by the Mavoy. And so there are courtyards opening into the Mavoy, but there are no houses. So why did Rav rule here that here one may carry in the Mavoy's entirety? Efshar it's possible for the owners of the houses to renounce their rights in the courtyard in favour of one in the courtyard. Oh, that's interesting. Sof Sof, the Gemara rejects this, Sof Sof, Bait Ika Batim Laika, in the final analysis in such an arrangement, there is one house her courtyard opening into the Mavoy, but there is not multiple houses. There is not the required multiple houses. Rav required that each of the minimum two courtyards open, opening into the Mavoy contains at least two houses. Efshad de Mitzafra ve'ad kalga de yoma chad. It's possible that from Shabbos morning until midday, Uh, they can each owner of a house can renounce their rights in their courtyard in favour of one house. Mi palge to yoma ule fanya legabe chad, and from midday to evening, in favour of another person's house, they can renounce in favour of another person's house. In that way, each courtyard will contain two houses, <laughs> and both of them will open into the Mavoy. That's very funny. Sof Sof, this is rejected as well by the Gemara. Sof Sof, Be'itna de'ite lahai le'ite lahai, in the final analysis, 
at the at the time this house is uh, this house is legal, the other house is not legal. Hence at any given moment the courtyard lacks the requisite two houses. Ama Ella Amara Ashi Mi Garam Lachatsero Shia Asru what caused the courtyards to be prohibited with regard to carrying them into the Mavoy, Batim, the houses, the houses is what caused the courtyards to be prohibited, Beleka and here, where the Erovei Chatera were not prepared, the houses are not a factor, and so rub permits carrying in the Mavoy's entirety. Rub permits carrying within a Mavoy. This is a note. Rub permits carrying within a Mavoy that lacks a shituf if there are no Erevoy Chatserot between the house and the courtyard and forbids carrying there if, er if Erevoy Chatserot were made. Now, failure to prepare the Eruv Chatserot is legally tantamount to preparing a shituf a Mavoy when we determine the Mavoy's legal status. So since it is now permitted to carry from a void to a court from a void to a courtyard, the Mavoy and courtyard are seen as one combined domain. Carrying from the courtyards to the Mavoy then is permitted as if a shituf were actually prepared. So the Mavoy and courtyards are now seen as one domain. Thus one may carry through the throughout the entirety of the Mavoy. Since the Mavoy and the courtyard are as are as one and one may carry in the courtyard. Also, as if a shituf were prepared. However, where erev or chatzorif were made, so that according to Rabbi, it is forbidden to carry from a courtyard to a mavoy, the houses and courtyard form one domain, while the shituf lacking mavoy consists, constitutes a different domain, one where the sages forbade, forbade carrying for a I get this. So, if you're Basically, the simple way I can think of it is that the Mavoy with the Shituf mm -hmm. constitutes an entire Erovei Chatserot. But if you have lots of Erovei Chatserot along this alleyway, mm -hmm. then it's it's like an impossible... You can't have Erovei Chatserot here and Erovei Chatserot here and Erovei Chatserot here all joined together mm. you, it, because they're still because separate they areas. to be one unit. It's like there are mm. l legally allowed domains that are allowed to mm. be next to each other and Erev Bechatserot between each other, joining to each other, do not constitute one a large single or, unit. A single unit. His notes is inhabitants of different houses located in the same courtyard would typically participate in the joining of courtyards for Shabbat. The joining of courtyards is accomplished in the following manner. Each of the families places a piece of bread or some other food in one location. Consequently, all the households in the courtyard are considered one extended household, and they may carry items on Shabbat from their houses to the courtyard and within the courtyard itself. However, in cases where there is no joining of courtyards, or where the halakha prohibits joining the courtyards, a different option is available. All the homeowners may relinquish authority over their shares of the courtyard to one homeowner. In that case, it is permitted to carry within the courtyard and between the courtyard and the house of a resident to whom all the other residents ceded control of their shares of the courtyard. However, mm. it is prohibited to carry between the courtyard and any of the other houses, mm. according to one opinion upon which the Gemara here is based. Yeah. Not only is it permitted to renounce authority in favour of one resident, mm. it is permitted to all the homeowners to then relinquish authority over their shares of the courtyard to a different resident on Shabbat itself. Mm. Now, I suppose... You can't make two Erevah Chatserot. No. You either make one for you yeah. and your neighbour, 
or you make one for the entire street. Yep. But you can't put, you can't be. No, because each area is a separate area. So. I wonder what the. I mean, the simple way to do it is to do it with the bread. Yeah. Well, it's going to be an interesting time when we get it here. Okay. It, um, it actually happened to Joanna and me when we got married. We bought, well, married for a while, we bought our, our own flat. And it was in a block of four, old style block of four near Bondi Beach. And um, it was sukkot and we had a sukkah in the backyard. And what would we do uh, to access it? These were these flats were um, titled. They, they were I don't know what's the type of title? Not title, title, strata title. And um, so I went and saw a rabbi about it. Rabbi Silverman, who recently died, and he asked, "Were there any other Jews in the building?" And there was a family, a Jewish family. Mm. And he said it wasn't completely satisfactory, but uh, we and the other Jewish family should buy jointly a loaf of bread and place it in the common area and use that as the basis for the Erev to so that on Shabbat we could go and sit in the backyard in there. Mm. So, Very nice. 